France is covered with thousands and thousands of megaliths, so we thought we'd drive around the south in a hire car, visiting and filming some stone circles, some possible stone spheres, some dolmen, and some standing stones. In fact, everywhere we went, we kept bumping into big rocks sticking out the ground. Another type of structure that's found all over France, a menhir or a single standing stone. Now, like dolmen, they're not only found in France, they're also found all over the world. They're in the UK, Czech Republic, Armenia, Iran, India, Argentina, Colombia. They've been found in South Africa. You've also got obelisks, which are single standing stones in places such as Lebanon or Egypt. Now, like dolmen, they also come in a variety of sizes and shapes and different types of rock are used for these different stones. They're sometimes uh, standing on their own in the middle of nowhere or they come in clusters. Like this one here has some friends. There's one over the back here and there's about another seven or eight of them that are hidden in this, uh, in this vegetation that I'll tell you, I'm a bit buggered if I'm going to try and find them. No, this? it looks a bit tough, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a beautiful stone. It's been polished. It's flaking off here. It must be made from this local flaky limestone. It's about three meters tall, two meters wide, probably about 30 centimeters thick. And this one, although it looks pretty impressive, almond shaped, probably been carved to look specifically like this. There are others around the world that are humongous. There's one in Brittany in France, which is um, now split into four different pieces. It's about 20 meters long in its, in its glory. And that's supposed to weigh something like 300 tons. And there are other blocks in Lebanon, for example, and also some in Egypt that are estimated to be over a thousand tons. And, and how the hell these people with stone tools and would, would have shifted those, uh, well, God only knows. So one stone weighs about 12 jumbo jets? Something like that, yeah. Wow. The 747 is 88 tonnes, isn't it? Yeah, that's so right. So more or less 12, 13, 14 of those for one stone. Wow. And they're humongous. You can see, you see coach parties lined up against them. So the fact that they're global and the fact that some of these are absolutely humongous and we can barely lift them nowadays, suggest that this uh, this global this, this civilization that we're after was possibly global and highly advanced this one at Juil what how much taller than me is it it's at least two and a half times your height mate right about five meters not con and you've got to consider how much is under the ground. There's probably got to be three or four metres of foundation in there, right? Which be here after 5,000 years or X number of years. So it's pretty damn good effort to get it up here, so transport of it. Reminds me of um, a little bit like the ones in, on the Orkney Island. Instead of making rock, really thin, rectangular. But the ones with um, stones of stone left. Oh, what's on the other island? Yeah. There's uh, no crystals. It's really porous. Well, it doesn't, it's not glistening anyway, like a lot of these rocks do. This one isn't the biggest in the area, though. There's another one. It's bigger than this. This is the central stone just over two meters tall. I'm 1.8 meters, so as you can see, it's about 50 meters, 40 meters to either side of the circle. And there's probably about 50 or 60 stones surrounding us. So we're here just north of Les Bondon, an area which has some standing stones. Now, they're not always on their own or in circles, sometimes they're in alignments. And you can see this one here 
and then there's another one off here in the distance on top of this hill and then there's kind of two companions which you can see in this direction this is part of what is the second biggest alignment in France, the first being Karnak, where there's about three or four thousand stones in the four kilometer area, but they're all in complete alignment within the field and it's really obvious. Here, they're much more sparse, they're, they're much more spread out. We've probably got about 150 stones within a four kilometer square area. We've been cycling around, we've been driving around, we've been walking around and we've probably come across about 50 of them. Now, this, first alignment is on one particular hill which is flowing down this way there's a second hill over here in this direction where there's a few stones not so many and then the third hill over there where we found the largest of the stones There goes Rich. There's a standing stone. More standing stones. And then another standing stone. So this is the largest stone we found up here on the Cham, Cham de Bondon. As you can see, probably over four meters tall. It's a good meter wide, humongous stone. And we're up in the hills. And you can just imagine Neolithic people with stone tools dragging this with rope and, and, and logs. I mean, how on earth would they have done that? It is the mystery of how they moved and erected some of these massive stones that make us question whether they had advanced technology or even abilities that nowadays we would consider magic. Here is a recent effort by a team in France and it's interesting to see the number of people needed to erect an 8 ton stone.
So sometimes these dolmen and standing stones sit side by side. This standing stone here, which you can see, is about 100 meters from the last dolmen we saw. As we diced with death to get to some of these sites, in a way that would have made Indiana proud, we couldn't help but wonder why our ancestors had erected so many stones out in the middle of nowhere. In the middle of nowhere, in the middle of the field, someone dumped Ooh. this. Looks like it's in two halves. Yeah. It is, huh? Another one that's been restored. It's about three metres tall in total. Yeah, I'm 1.8. So, yeah, two and a half of that. Pretty thick. So why the hell would someone put so many of these stones? This one's more or less on its own. There's about, there's two more little standing stones just this way and some dolmen. But Sometimes they're completely in the middle on their own. It may mark something under the ground, like water meeting, yeah. some sort of geological. Ley lines. If we believe in those kind of things. Well, yes. Walking. Although they're not in a line, are they, with the other stones? No. Um, but then ley lines don't necessarily go in straight lines. People talk about like thousands of diamonds. We've worked out the energies and how the energies come from. Some spiral away, some go off at really long wavelengths and join up with other standing stones. Have you seen if there are any cut marks in this that might suggest that telluric energy hits it? No. It also could have been where the crack was. Could have been. It would be good to um, see if there's any crystals in this too. Is there possible to do it? So here's another stone out in the middle of nowhere. This one's called the Menir de Belenac, not far from Greece. Um, what can you say about this one? It's probably what, three metres tall? Probably two metres at least underneath the ground. Um, so what do we think these were used for then? I don't know really. Actually, I mean, official I reasons are... I don't really know whether there are any official reasons. No. I think they kind of ignored them. Yeah. Uh, I think they were walkways linking up other sites that people walked by. Or underneath. They're where water channels meet, mm -hmm. and then the stones are placed over where the water hits because that produces large amounts of energy. Yeah. Normally negative ions if it's uh, good energy, and then these stones act as amplifiers, which is why many people say they can feel them vibrate and giving off energy. Well, I can feel again, like with that um, at the stone circle, I can feel tingling in my arms. So there's definitely some sort of energy being emitted by the stones, and thousands like David. exciting structures in the world but when you imagine that they're, you know, they're all around the world and could be you know, could be evidence of global civilization. So manias or standing stones are not easy to create without the use of some kind of machine. So you would think that there must have been a good reason for them to do so. They are found all around the world and contribute to the growing amount of evidence that suggests that there was an ancient civilization that was global and highly advanced. If you know of any countries not listed here that also have standing stones then please let us know. And if you live close to one of them, then become a modern explorer by making a video or sending us some photos. In fact, we would appreciate you doing this for any sites near you. And if you want to contribute to modern explorers in any way, our doors are always open. Recently a friend of ours from Norway joined us for a couple of days on our tour of France and after some serious persuasion she agreed to join our stone hugging campaign. <laughs> I don't know how you have this. There we go, that's it. Here we have the promo video for stone hugging. The new worldwide craze. <laughs> they have these in Norway too, right? Yeah.